Hey folks, Rob Potter here. Um, I'm just going to do a follow up um, to my Len Horowitz interview. Um, we had some. Uh, Len has his own experiences, and uh, you know, as we talked, uh, he didn't like to go out on the limb by claiming extraterrestrials. Pretty soon, those who went out on the limb will be proven as the way showers. Now, Len's area of expertise, as with his brilliant knowledge, is used primarily in science and hard evidence and facts in um, his research. So the second part of this interview that I'm going to put and link it to that interview is my thoughts and comments after our brief interview in which he was busy and had to go. So um, check it out. Here is some of my own thoughts after the interview with Dr. Leonard Horowitz. So you'll have to see that interview first in order for this to be working for you. Thank you so much, folks. Maybe I'll see you in Mount Shasta at one of my summer conferences, perhaps this year in 2024, July 18th to the 21st. More info on that later in this interview. Okay, what dispels ignorance? Light. Light is knowledge. Light is information. Little packets, waveforms of information. When you use laser light, like I do with crystals from Fred Bell, which came from the Pleiadians directly, you have specific frequencies of light of a specific nature and frequency. Len Bell talks about frequency. The advanced healing technologies coming out in scalar waves and various other systems are very important for the betterment and the healing of mankind. Eventually, Fred Bell's technology which was garnered from Fred Hart and Thomas Coulson. It was called the Depolar Ray. They had one cathode ray tube that was of the violet frequency. And this had noble gases within it. And it would emit frequencies that would correct the, the DNA. And it would emit a sound. Eventually, and he was had it, was ready to produce it when he was killed. He was in the process of trying to uh, create this machine. He was having problems finding technology and production people capable of assimilating this technology. But it was a, a standing column, like my irradiator, and those seven tubes would have various noble gases in there. There would be various frequencies. You would place your hand over a thing that would read your aura. It would assimilate your DNA. It would take you back to the healthiest point of your DNA. And by lying down in a pH water balanced tub, this would come over you and it would uh, make you young again. Okay. This is what the great King's chamber tub was that sarcophagus. The initiate would lay in that sarcophagus in a pH balanced tub and that tub would make them young again. It's called an ascension sheet. It's also talked about in the I Am books by Dr. Godfrey Ray King. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about that. I don't care. The Ascended Masters are real. In 1983, Gabriel Green told me to come to his house because the Ascended Master had sent me a teacher. You can research that on my YouTubes. Basically, a teacher came up. Uh, he was a military soldier who broke his mind control. He refused to work with the Greys abducting women and putting babies uh, in these little tubes. And uh, he told them, I quit. And they said, you're going to Leavenworth. He said, fine. He was semi-tortured and then offered a honey trap. And he said, send me to Leavenworth. I'm not working with you guys. This is unholy. And uh, Semyasi came in. She waved her hand and took him out. Um, and uh, she disappeared and she said, follow the light. And as he got around the corner, her footprints disappeared in the snow. He was on a military base, an underground gray human agreement abduction base. This is in, you know, we're talking, you know, uh, you know, 70s. So I, so he took me out in the desert and Semyasi ship landed in front of me and I had telepathic communication. I had been having many out-of-body experiences with Fred Bell. I can't really, it's very difficult to explain that. Uh, but 
it, it culminated in 1989. Fred Bell and I were beamed aboard the ship. And I remember at five in the morning, I was beamed back down and I remembered everything for about four minutes. He slapped me on the back. He said, you're the master now. And I, and I, I said, oh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to help it. He goes, yeah, you're going to help. And then I said, I'm losing my memory. And he goes, I know that's the veil. He says, they're doing that for your own protection. You'll remember later. Here we are. I've been waiting. I asked the Venusians and they said that the Pleiadian uh, hierarchy has to relieve that. So just be aware. There's not only the Pleiadians and the Venusians and the, the, the solar council of the many uh, other members of our confederation that live in the solar system on the various moons. There's also bases where many other federations are here and interacting to protect the earth. There are also some fallen beings. So the AI, to get into that discussion with uh, Len, my information indicates that all AI has to be programmed. We are ignorant of the true interdimensional nature and God's administration in the material worlds. And within the earth, for a long, long time, there is a hierarchy, a hierarchy of interdimensional beings, uh, you know, some negative and some positive that we're administering to earth. And that has changed. The covenant changed on 2012 and December 21st, and the fallen beings who gained control of the earth 16,500 years ago um, had ended a giant war on the earth. And a new covenant was made where no one was going to interact on the surface with the ETs to let humanity go forward. But the fallen Anunnaki, in particularly uh, an offspring of Anu and uh, a reptilian queen in Orion named Marduk, came to earth and became the administrator of the earth. And of course, he was following the agenda of the hatred of God from the Luciferian rebellion, and he actually corrupted Solomon, uh, possibly Isis and others. So um, this led to a default inside the earth. This is spoken about in the Urantia book. It's all, also spoken, uh, referenced by Dravelo Melchizedek, who was having conversations with a major avatar named Van. He was very famous for one of the people fighting against the Luciferian rebellion, a very long-lived being, and he talked uh, about the science of the Merkabah and, of course, the flower of life meditation, which is actually the DNA reactivation. All of this knowledge has been hidden from us. This is why uh, they have created ignorance in humanity. And the Venusians told me, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable about this. I said, why aren't you doing more? Why can't you help? And all these things. And they said, you know, when mankind evolves on his own and learns to think on his own, he'll be worthy of membership in the Galactic Confederation. So it's important that we recognize the true history inside the earth. Now, I have a little more esoteric, and I'm called the UFO conspiracy theorist. I'm their conspiracy theorist. They don't want to recognize, and I can tell you some high-level names, um, that don't believe I've had this experience, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to bring anybody personal into this. I don't ever talk uh, negatively about people in public. Privately, I will, you know, indicate my opinion and certain things about certain people. I've never said anything bad about them personally. I do believe certain information is counter to mine. Why do I trust my information so much? I'm a 50 year face to face contactee of the Pleiadians and the Venusians. Okay. I met Sem Yassi when I was about 17 or 18, uh, several times. There's a lot of things I can't tell about that for sure. But um, I witnessed their ships come down above Fred's house. Um, met, I w they actually come into the house. The golden light rains and you're into the astral plane. It's a very special experience. Then I take, I'm taken out of my body. I watch the earth disappear. And the next thing, there's no one there. I'm in a blank space and it's all mental imagery. I'm showing images and wherever my attention goes, I was learning. I was learning about the creation, the creator, life in their space, the incredibly slow evolution uh, from, from a rock to a uh, uh, which would be mineral to animal or to vegetable to animal and then to human evolution. Um, and there's a lot of, 
very difficult esoteric ex explanations to to go into and I, and I'm not an expert on that but I do have a good heart I'm not a liar and um I want to tell you all that um there's a lot of things going to be happening here so in reference to the AI system, I believe the quantum AI system has been transferred to an Earth representative. And I know I'm going to get a lot of heat on that, but I'm going to be doing some interviews. I have I have one more round of questions to ask with the Venusians before I think I, I release that. But I do believe this person is very positive, is very well intended, has high eth ethical morals. I think she's under a lot of pressure. I do know some of her information is, is faulty. Now, they are not telling her what to say. She has her own relationship with the with the I am presence. And um, she talks about the creator son. So the creator son, so you know, is what we would call Archangel Michael or the creator of this universe. But you are a creator son too, fledgling. Your body encompasses millions of bacteria in life. You are a universe into yourself. You are a reflection of that father of lights the creator of this galaxy. Now, we term it as Archangel Michael, a being with a sword and a shield and a masculine. I believe it's an infinite uh, intelligence. Now, we look out in the solar system, just on the physical plane with our we can see billions and trillions of galaxies, worlds without end. Each of those has a creator sun that is souls that galaxy. According to the Arantia book, which I believe, uh, it's quite accurate. It's a description of the heavenly administration with with uh, monologues by beings from higher dimensions that they themselves don't even know. They say, well, these beings, we know they're around. We don't know what they do. But they do make clear that the creator son must incarnate on a series of levels within his own creation within the galaxy. And he chose the earth, uh, this nexus planet or portal planet, way on the edge of the galaxy as a planet to uh, have his incarnation on the physical plane. He basically came down and agitated to the Luciferian rebellion. How many millions of years ago? I don't even know what it was. So he was up on the mountain and Lucifer or Marduk, the representative Satan um, said, you are getting a name for yourself, raising people from the dead at age seven. You're tremendous. Wow. Worship me. I own the world. I can give you everything. And he said, get thee behind me. And that was that. He dismissed him. Now, who was Jesus Christ? There is something known as the office of the Christ, and it's on many worlds, and it's known throughout the galaxy. Earth, the physical worlds reach a point of evolution in the third dimension, and they come to a tipping point, and then there's a harvest. People are presented with a, a selfish love pole of matter or a selfless love pole of matter. And this is chronicled in UFO Contact uh, from Iarga by uh, Colonel Wendell Stevens and a, a man named Steph von Denard, or Stefan from the Earth. He was a thing, great book. It's also available in the archives of my inner circle. If you go to that, I have a tremendous uh, archive of books, voice recordings, PDFs. A lot of stuff is in there. So uh, for $59 for life, you get a really good value. Now, that rebellion was judged. And 2,000 years later, now we're seeing the fulfillment of all the ancient prophecies that are known throughout the galaxy about a great cleansing of darkness within the universe from that fall. And that's taking place now. Elena Danan is reporting on that in certain levels. Um, I'm reporting on that. Observer Ranch Creative Society is talking about the end times. This is a cleansing. One of the reasons Christ was attacked, said, had, said he was blasphemy, claiming he was God. He did. But so are you. I'll tell you why he was special. The Venusians or the Norkans, as Corey Good actually explained, when he was put in a little valley, he said he saw some, some ants up there. There may have been ants, but there were definitely bees. So the bees um, 
our native population of Venus, they're sentient beings, they're conscious, <clears throat> and they're about, you know, six to eight feet, numerous species. Some are hybridized with humans, unfortunately. But when Corey saw them, that's confirmed. The Norcans moved from Tau Ceti 25 million years ago to Venus. It was a prehistoric planet. Um, and then at a certain point in time, the Pleiadians and some Alderons using the Vril technology, which is a hybridization program, uh, which was misused. And they hybridized the humans and the bees without their permission to use them as a farm worker race. I'm not going to go into the story, but it's in Raymond Keller's third book, Cosmic Race, Excellent Adventure. And you can research how they got their genetics back. So they uh, live peacefully. And the Venusian humans now uh, contain a positive aspect of the hind mind that they're in harmony with each other. They have a, a completely different society, which you'll be learning about soon through me and Dr. Raymond Keller as we get closer and closer to the actual uh, first contact. First contact's already taken place, never has left, and that's with individuals behind the scenes. The negative forces that ruled the Earth uh, were counterbalanced by a group called the Watchers. Fifth dimensional races came down inside the Earth to guard against the complete and total onslaught and takeover of this planet. Uh, the, the, wherever those inner earth, interdimensional bases exist, there is always a huge galactic presence run by the Galactic Confederation of Light. That is not a psyops. It's a local federation comprised of 601 worlds and 51 systems. It includes Alpha Centauri, Wolf 56, um, uh, uh, Arcturians, Sirius A, Sirius B, and Sirius C, which people don't know about yet, and of course, Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, and probably a couple others that Raymond Keller might be able to tell us about. But this group is establishes protocols here. All other federations must go through our federation. Why didn't they help sooner? Because this contract with the artificial intelligence was given over to Marduk, Satan, a great general who ended some of the genetic wars a long, long time ago, um, but sided with Satan, and I sided with Lucifer, and had a hatred for mankind. So uh, they've always been kept at bay. The earth would have been destroyed many, many, many times had these beings been successful. They were finally educated not too long ago, last year. This was reported by Ground Command, the one in charge of the artificial intelligence, and also by Elena Danan. They both attended the same meeting where Enlil and a very large Sirikar reptilian, which has been the most powerful force, and they removed them and kicked them off, and they basically have evacuated most of the 800 pound gorilla of these fallen species. How did they circumnavigate the laws of non-interference? They did that by hybridizing a series of bloodlines, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Lees, the Wongs, the Woos, the House of Winter, the, the, uh, you know, the uh, House of Bourbon, the Orange Line. There's just a lot of hidden plans behind mankind. And we're here, I'm here to act as light and to dispel the darkness. And they said, Rob, he said, don't obsess about the, the dark force. We have that well under control. And they do. And I know that that's occurring. So my viewpoint's a little more positive on one level uh, with him on terms of the AI. They're not getting the digital currency. Number one, they don't control the alpha of the, of the quantum system. That quantum system was handed over in a formal ceremony in Durango, Colorado, underneath there where some of the most wealthiest mineral deposits on the planet, one of the major vortexes on the planet. And she get control. She didn't know what was happening and how the computer system works, but she has an AI system that she is in control of. They fooled her. Marduk said, well, look, let's just give the world uh, 10 years worth of money. And so she did it, and the governments were funded from 2012 to 2022. She now knows that they wanted to depopulate the planet. He told her, I think in 50 or 14, they said, you know, we have to depopulate the planet by 95%. She says, what? You first. He tried to kill her, and he lost his body. He still was able to influence 
from beyond the grave by various of the elite dark families. And uh, it's a lot of it's about the control of money. Money is the root of all evil. And the quantum financial system is how they engineered our society into scarcity and lack and, and led the control to these elite bloodlines. Now, there will be no more money for non-governmental organizations. BlackRock, CDC, FDA, all of these DHS, IMF, WEF, Bilderberger, all of these guys are following plans given to them by their masters or off-world representatives of Satan. At a certain time, um, a certain level, they don't really understand the program. They just know they get money and power if they agree to compromising themselves by committing murder, a murder ceremony, so something's held over them, or, you know, it's just horrendous. And unfortunately, this is the people who have been running our world. The governments have nothing for us. I'm going to say individually within various governments, maybe certain people that are just common criminals of fraud, of coercion, blackmail, that uh, continue to do bad things without consequence. All the world food corporations are involved in poisoning the populace. You have to be responsible. Look at the ingredients on a, a Doritos potato chip. If you're buying it, you're, you're killing yourself. There's no more worthy goal than to pay perfect homage to the sacred temple of flesh, which is our vehicle for spirit. So look at Len Horowitz, Oxy Silver, very important. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rob Potter. I'm from thepromisedrevealed.net. Um, my website that mostly has to do with uh, my contact experiences throughout my life and other interesting information. I have a lot of videos and YouTube channels, which you can see at the footer of my website. If you don't mind, I want to thank you for coming to my uh, YouTube, my blog, wherever you are seeing this message from. And I'd like to make you aware of a few things on my website. I'm going to try to make this a little infomercial in this YouTube uh, pretty quick, but I'll just check this out real quick here. Um, this is my uh, website here. Um, and uh, we can see <clears throat> I have a Mount Shasta summer conference. I have events. I have a shop. I have many different blogs. <clears throat> you might want to join my inner circle, which is down here. Um, and you, for the price of $59, you get a $50 discount on my summer conference. You also get my book, which is $30 with all the Venusian recordings of face-to-face -face video and uh, transcripts. Real quickly here, my summer conference, you can click that first banner. You come here. And you're going to see we have speakers scheduled. What an incredible lineup we have. <clears throat> Dr. Raymond Andrew Keller, author of 11 books <laughs> on Venus, including the Gospel of Thomas, Vivian Chauvet, Louis Martens, an incredible contactee from South America. He's leading our Skywatch this year, but it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to guarantee spaceships will be seen by everyone or you get your money back. Um not everyone may see one if you miss it. If everyone else saw it, uh, you're going to have to be watching carefully. Uh, Alex Collier is coming. But Kiva Makede Fall um, is from Senegal. He speaks 12 language or plays 12 instruments and speaks 10 languages, has about four or five degrees. It's very instrumental in Africa at the highest level of, um, of, of government and societal influence. Alex Collier is coming this year. And of course, the other speakers you see here, Frank Chile, some of my old friends, Scott and Vicki Warner, uh, some new people, Twin Rays, a lot of wonderful people. If you'd like to learn, if you'd like to come, if you need a free ticket, you go to the volunteer site, come down here, read it, you download the form, you fill it out, you mail it to me, and you get yourself a free ticket. We have uh, lots of different options there for you. So this year, we're going to be in one location. It's beautiful. It's a in the mountain and um, we've got some we're gonna have some slideshows and videos you can see mount shasta is absolutely gorgeous we're gonna show you a slideshow of the lakes we're about a mile from a natural glacial lake we are going to be going from uh in the morning with yoga classes we're going to have meditations we got fire pits we're going to have sky watches it's going to be quite quite spectacular this summer and uh so some workshops will be off-site. Some will be on-site. Of course, the Skywatch will be off-site. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
thepromisedrevealed.net. And let's take a quick uh, look at that again, real quick here. We're going to go here and we're going to go back to the main site. And um, it's going to be July 18th through the 21st at the Methodist camp. We have incredible prices right now. Um, it's an early bird special, but the prices will be increasing. So you want to get your ticket. We do have camping on site. It's incredible. Of course, they got wonderful products here. You can check them all out here. And I look forward to uh, uh, seeing you all this summer in Mount Shasta, California. All right. Thank you, folks. The Promise Revealed.net. Rob Potter here. Thank you. There's so many wonderful healing frequencies and technologies. The Great Pyramid was also had multi-uses. It was an initiation device. The King's Chamber raised and lowered with the full moon cycles and the, the Queen's Chamber. There was technology inside the Queen's Chamber, uh, but uh, I think it's above the Queen's Chamber that um, helps stabilize the Earth. The Great Pyramid was built 13,500 years ago. You can read about that in uh, the book by Radu Sinemar, Forgotten Genesis in the Transylvania Sunrise Series, translated by Peter Moon. So I'm going to be presenting evidence on this about the Nazis and, and the reptilians and the, and the robots, the artificial intelligence. That is a concern. They did have a, a, a plan to do a fake alien invasion with Project Bluebeam. They have some of that left. But I'm going to tell you that um, they had bombs planted in buildings and they were going to use government space agencies to fake an alien invasion. This would cause everyone to come other as come under an alien threat, which Ronald Reagan said would draw everyone together in a one world government, which, of course, Len Horowitz is talking about and that psyops. But we're going to come together in a one world universal trust with a federation of member states that will be free to live and choose a confederation, which means people can move and travel freely amongst them. There will be ample money to restore this planet. They were spending trillions of dollars in destruction and fear and manipulating and creating blood sacrifices for all the wars of humanity back from the Roman times before and everyone after. This uh, parasite that's invisible in a dimensional level of this spiritual warfare that uh, sucked loose, as they call it, or life force energy. And Len Horowitz is absolutely correct to turn you into a cyborg of control, to depopulate the planet and run you like a matrix and just feed on your energy because darkness cannot create, only light can create. So that was the, the plan all along to hybridize humans and to create these black-eyed hybrid reptilians, uh, many other races involved in that, but um, it pretty much was a, a pretty unholy agenda. So I wanna say, the galactic forces of love and light uh, are here. Uh, let me go back to Christ. So Christ was, a. Uh, uh, they came from Tau Ceti and they got permission to be here. And then 18 million years ago, there was a, a being who was on the uh, third dimensional world there. He ascended to the seventh dimension in one lifetime, along with three brothers. And that name is mentioned in the Bible, uh, as Salem Melchizedek. He's also mentioned as in the Hindu scriptures as Sunat Kumara. And that's how he's known on, on Venus. And he guarded the world and he maintained um, watching over the earth. We had other civilizations prior to Lemurian Atlantis. And, um, you know, we were hybridized by the Anunnaki 425,000 years. That's when it began. They began hybridizing and coming around every five or 10,000 years to modify us for the mostly benevolent. When the genetics got to a high level, there were many other races bought in because the human DNA is considered holy and sacred and royalty, according to Alex Collier. And that's confirmed by my sources as well. I love Alex. By the way, Alex will be coming to my Mount Shasta Summer Conference soon. So this being Sunat Kamara was teaching on other worlds in the third dimension. He was going around as what's called a world teacher to bring people into understanding of greater spiritual truths. Okay, 17 million years as a world teacher. He was chosen by the Father of Lights, the creator of this galaxy, 
to hold and be overshadowed by the creator of this galaxy for three and a half years. That's the etymology of Jesus Christ and why he's called the living word of God. He's the highest possible incarnation on the physical plane. He now exists as a multidimensional representative for earth and all other worlds to the father of lights. And I can promise you the darkness would never succeed here. There are many people from other galaxies here. It's called the Super Federation of Worlds that Elena Danon talks about. And they're all going through, to a certain extent, um, the protocols of contact on Earth established by the local federation. The local federation wants to respect our free will. I'm sure that many of the other federations want to come down and blaze, blaze blunts gazing, traumatize the humans, re remove the bad guys. But that would not serve our free will. We would not learn our lessons. So I want to make sure that you understand in the reincarnational process on Earth, we have both fallen and divine thought forms. Um, and this is a, a reference to J.J. Hertak in his incredible book, uh, The Keys of Enoch. Um, fallen master from, uh, you know, uh, Arctur, uh, Arct there's some from Arcturus. Uh, Ar no, I'm sorry, from uh, Ur Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Polaris, and Thuban. These are beings that um, have fallen in their state and lowered in their dimensional influence, but they're still uh, have superpowers, gods beyond our development. So they're basically been bullying about children uh, in a, a secure classroom, uh, toddlers with psychology degrees. And they're the 800 pound gorilla in the room. It's the only one that can jump up and grab the the bar and get out of there. So we are fighting an uphill battle created by beings who created or very influential DNA. Let me make it clear. We have 120 races who influence our human DNA. So yes, Christ was very special. I asked the Venusians about how can I worship one being as a creator? And they made me do some research. I talked to Raymond Keller, and I prognosticated the, the lineage that I just told you. And they said, you're learning line upon line, precept upon precept. So this is a logical explanation. There's so much we don't know. And as Semyasi told Fred Bell and I, she said, you know, you think you know something, and then you realize you know nothing at all. And it's true. Knowledge are just steps on an endless ladder. But it's wisdom and spiritual intuition that Len Horowitz demonstrates, that Alex Collier, Raymond Keller, Louis Martens, and I'm a junior soldier there. I'll tell you that. But I am connected. I've been gifted with many wonderful experiences. And I'm here to, to, to prophesize the truth of mankind's liberation and eventual ascension to the fifth dimension. But I'm here also to warn you to evangelize the truth of what's taking place. Natural disasters are coming, not since the time of Moa or since the time of Moses. And when I talk about angels here with uh, what Len Horitz was you know, I, it's hard for him to go out there. He'll he'll stick himself out academically, but he's still sticking himself neck out there on the guillotine all the time. I don't care. We're all immortal. That's what Christ taught. That's what the Sanhedrin did like. But he said, you're all immortal. And they said, what should we do? Who's the greatest, you know, after you leave? He said, those who are servants, those who serve each other. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and play for you now the Queen's message. Uh, this is a longer show than I thought, but Len sparked some things, and he's such a wonderful person and so powerful. I want to um, uh, play this message from the Queen for, that was played at my last year's summer conference. And I want you to just meditate and listen and ponder on these words and see if you uh, can resonate with it. If it doesn't, if this story I have is too far-fetched for you, and I say, put it aside, 
But I say, go in full, believe it, and have faith in the things I'm telling you. I've met these beings. They have not changed. I met Valiant Thor. I met Jillian. I met Don Thor. I met Valiant Thor. And each time they had people with them. So um, I met the commander of the moon base. I met the security chief. And I met uh, uh, Pleiadians on board the craft. I don't remember that. But I met a Pleiadian named James. That's another story. Uh, when I was in Canada speaking in 1989. So... Listen to the Queen of Venus, who is now 500-something years old and who did live on Earth and became a translated being. She is now the Queen of Venus due to her lifetime on Earth, her knowledge of Earth, and her lifetime of service on Earth, on Venus. And she is the head of the solar council of this solar system, and she's the representative to the Super Federation of Worlds, uh, probably some other representatives too, but the, the head of the representative of the Galactic Confederation of Light comprised of 601 worlds and 51 solar systems and their attendant moons. And many moons have people on them. And so I'm going to uh, tell you that right now there's 480 moons in our solar system and a lot of them are populated. And not all of them are from the system. Okay? So... They have bases on the backside of the moon. That is in control of the Venusians. There's no reptilians. There's no operations running off the moon. And I don't care who says that. Uh, the Venusians have assured me. So here's a message from the queen. And I'll try to pull up some interesting videos in the background. Dear friends of Venus and light workers assembled at Mount Shasta in Northern California, this 22nd day of June 23rd, for the opening ceremonies of the 23 Summer Conference the new spiritual paradigm, angels and extraterrestrials in the multidimensional universe. This is the queen, lady order of Abahar, the planet of abiding love that you know as Venus, is speaking to you from a safe house situated somewhere on the east coast of the United States. I consider it a great honor for me to address you today. In the coming days, you will interact with many ascended souls touching your spirit to activate both a personal and collective transformation of consciousness, advancing you to, to yet higher levels of awakening and understanding. We have taken good note that many of you have already expressed your appreciation to Commander Valiant Thor, Alan, Lady Columba, Lady Aurora, Commander Aura Reigns, Dr. Frank E. Stranges, our historian Publius Virgilius Morrow, our ambassador Omnek Onek, Helen and Betty Mitchell, Sister Thedra, Lady Ankara, and many others so dear to my heart, those of our angelic forces of light, for granting you access to night classes aboard our Victor class, cloaked and ethereal star vessels in orbit above our planet. We are also pleased that so many of among you have already recognized your callings and missions in preparing your fellow beings of Earth for overcoming the obstacles that are surely headed to your planet in the difficult days ahead, long foretold by the avatars and prophets sent among you since the beginning of recorded history. You, dear brothers and sisters in the light, are the fulfillments of the prophecy written by the Apostle Luke to the General Assembly of the Church of the Firstborn in Acts 2.16, which reads as follows. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old Here's men of shall dreams, dream dreams. Now, I feel at this point that I should say something to you about angels, since that's the theme of this most special conference. Your understanding of just who and what angels are is limited by the religious constructs imposed on you since birth. Apart from the atheists or agnostic, however, most believers in God and hereafter can acknowledge the existence of a heaven or a pleroma populated with both some of our dearly departed ones in a class of highly evolved spiritual beings commonly referred to as the angels. The word angel is derived from the Greek angelos, which simply signifies messenger. In the Bible, Standard King James Version, we find a compilation of 66 books 
consisting of 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. We know that angels, therefore, are important insofar as they are mentioned 273 times in 34 of these 66 books. And in all of these references, we find angels always presented in the context of being otherworldly visitors of a primarily spiritual nature, but having the ability to appear to humans, in most instances, in a form similar to that of the human body with slight variations. Reverend Dr. Frank E. Strange, who lived on Earth from the period of 1927 to 2008, and now resides in the crystal city of Azur on Venus, was once director of the International Evangelism Crusade of Van Nuys, California, and a globally recognized authority of the subjects of extraterrestrial life and flying saucers. He now wants you to know that there are at least four classes of angels serving the inhabitants of the earth for various reasons. Messenger angels, ministering angels, guardian angels, and reaper angels. These otherworldly entities frequently show up in the lives of human beings during their times of special need. Perhaps they will come to you in order to bring you safely through some distressing or dangerous situation, or perhaps to warn you of coming trials or catastrophe ahead. But in most cases, an angel will come to bring you words of spiritual knowledge, delivering secrets of the celestial realms, essential for your physical or spiritual salvation and eventual exaltation. Of course, these angels bring all of us such cosmic gnosis, not of their own accord, but as directed by the Father of Lights. And then, that is one classification of angels that long ago lost their privilege of serving humankind. These are the fallen ones, about one third of the hosts of heaven that came from all four of these aforementioned categories of celestial servants, but put themselves in rebellion to the creator of the universe and were as a result of their defiance toward God, ousted from heaven. These are the ones you have to look out for, my friends as they are lurking in all the dark corners of your world, ready to pounce on you like a roaring lion. In a previous message imparted to you by our beautiful Clarion Moon-based commander, Aura Reigns, she told you of the COVID pandemic, that it was but a foreshadowing of the pale horse prophecy in the Apostle John's revelation given from the Isle of Patmos in the year 99 of your common era. This was a direct sign that we are approaching the projected seven year period of tribulation, granting assurance to you, the saints of God in these later days, that the reaping angels are standing by to whisk you away to super earths, paradise worlds now being prepared for you in the Sirius star system a celestial incubator. And all of this in order that you'll be safe from alarm and danger when the four horsemen will ride across the sky and the blast of the seven angels' trumpets will announce the powering out of the vials of plagues and destruction upon the earth, such as have not been seen since the days of the prophets Noah and Moses. It's very important to act while there is still time. About these angels... They also appear to herald the birth of very important figures or even those who would be emerging on the scene. Sometimes they would come to caution the world about an enemy who could potentially threaten it. That is another scripture from the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses 6, 7, which has great importance in our day. It reads as follows. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the, four, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. This will be the last call the last chance for many to escape in the rapture of the saints, 
the terrible calamities coming as foretold in the remainder of chapter 14. Do not hesitate to sound the voice of warning throughout the land. These visitors have been appearing since the beginning of time. If you go back into ancient history, you will find that in many cultures and civilizations all around the world, there is evidence of otherworldly visitors with wings who would come to speak with important figures on earth in whom they felt could help them in carrying out the contents of their messages. The wings, of course, quote unquote, are representative of this being's ability to fly. Overall, we know that there were messengers that came throughout time. And I will let you in on a little fourth dimension of Venusian secret. These angels also came to earth in and out of time. There was no partiality shown in the deliverance of the message geographically or spiritually. And so, do you want to know who is that angel flying in the midst of heaven? You, the light worker, are that angel. In fact, you were called to be an angel before you were ever incarnated on the earth plane. And that is your calling, dear one, to be a messenger of the light and spread the gospel or good news of the coming degrees of glory and exaltation that await each and every child of God should they step up into that marvelous light. And please keep in mind Dr. Frankie Strange's and Lady Ankara's favorite verse, Hebrews 13, 2, which clearly explains each and everyone's highest calling on earth's material plane. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Exercising kindness is the key that unlocks the door to celestial riches, both abundant and eternal. Hold on to your heads, dear ones. We are all in for a real roller coaster ride in the next decade. This is the Queen, Order of Abahar. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I got to wrap this up pretty quick here. Uh, but I was showing some images of Venusians, and uh, I, 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 you know, I did have a a car accident, some whiplash, and um, I, I do want to share with you real quick my Mount Shasta summer conference. We have an incredible deal. It's going to be ending very soon. Right now, you can camp for five days and four days of a conference for only $400. I'm going to show that to you right now. So we're going to get there and we go to, um, we'll get back to, you hit click on this first banner, QR code or whatever. You hit this and you're going to be taken to my actual conference site. Uh, we've added uh, a guy named Kiva Makete from October. We have to, Vivian Chavez has a family uh, member graduating from uh, NASA protocol. And we also have Alex Collier on here, Dennis Adams, Jane Mosteller. And um, we're probably going to have a guy named uh, Bill Ross, Akashic Record Reader. So we got more people here. This is all in one location uh, in Mount Shasta. So all the information for tickets, purchase those tickets right now. They're $400. This shows you a little bit about the conference. We do need volunteers. You come for free. Um, so um, we'll be talking about a lot of different stuff here and come down here to the speakers and you get their biographies. Haruko Bustar, incredible voice. Lily Nova, a new one on the scene, of course, my old friend, Laura Eisenhower. And so we're gonna, Brad Olson, of course, uh, he, he's a good staple. He's very honest, very kind, and very good researcher. So um, if not, please sign up for my inner circle right now, the funds with a, a car accident and some medical bills. Um, I'm trying to get service, but it's hard to find doctors who will work um, based on a lawsuit. So um, <clears throat> we'll be talking about uh, other things in the near future. God bless you all. The victory of the light is here. We're moving forward. Most of the bad guys are gone. <clears throat> we have to ignore them. And as Creative Society said, we must work together. We must begin to establish new relationships among ourselves, especially in our local community. We must prepare our infrastructure. 
and our community building because the governments are inept. The local governance sometimes is controlled in bigger cities, and the most part, they're going to fall away when crisis comes because they're not leaders. They don't have any solutions. We must get together, band together. We must prepare uh, food banks and advanced uh, farming techniques to create high-yield indoor gardening. The temperature's going to change. There's going to be very high winds, and the cataclysms that are taking place all over the world are not being reported. The devastation for people around the world, not only under fire, but under natural disaster is important. Again, it's not global warming for a political agenda for an AI. They don't have that power anymore. They do have a sub AI, which is quite powerful, but it can't do 138 transactions a second like the real quantum system, which they used to have control of. They don't know that. Only the very elites and those have been taken out because they keep trying to sacrifice children and bring in Satan back. But he's gone. The light forces are here. The Christ consciousness is inside you. Through frequency and love, you're going to generate that. God bless you all. And um, may the force be with you.